，那百富通也可以去去去看看。啊，I remember pretty much all you guys recruiting, but you're your coach. We ain't quite together. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, you just put it underneath it. Ah, you can put it underneath it right here. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. I'm Bill Ashley. I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs and Director of Athletics here at the college. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're here to announce a, a couple of uh, good tidings. Uh, we'll first start off with a little recap of the fall with some uh, athletic updates and then we'll get into the, to the meat of the program. Uh, men's soccer this year. Uh, our Southwest men's soccer team finished with the best record ever at 13-6. Uh, we made our first ever postseason appearance, and we also made the MACJC tournament for the first time as well. Uh, some individual honors. We had uh, freshman Jaime DeLore uh, wind up leading the NJCAA in goals. He had 31 goals this year, and he had 69 points that also led the NJCAA. Um, he's also been nominated for All-American. Uh, here at the college, Jamie, or Jaime, excuse me, Jaime set six program records, including two career records, and he was a... Uh, two-time league player of the week and one-time national player of the week as well. Um, we also had uh, Francisco Aliciardi uh, and Delore were named as all region team members in JCA Region 23. Uh, Morris Aiken, Philip Millet were also all state. Uh, Aiken, Millet, and Aliciardi played in the All-Star game as well. As far as women's, uh, uh, the women's program goes, Taylor Laurent was named all state as a sophomore. And both Laurent and Brinkley Glant were named All-Star Team participants as well. And the All-Star Team was also coached by Coach Betty Casey, and they won that game 5 nothing. Football, uh, Radion Pierce was an All-Region and first team All-State on offense. Duke Danzler and Michael Ware were first team selections for uh, the defense on the All-South Team as well. Then McLaren, Anthony Eshman, they were both second team All-State offense. Uh, as far as basketball goes, our women's program, uh, currently the Lady, Lady Women or Lady Bears women's basketball team is currently 5-0, and and our men's basketball team is currently 2-2 two two on the season, and we had a great battle last night, and we uh, had a great victory as well and to conclude our tournament last night. Um, without further remarks, I'd like to introduce Coach, uh, Coach Gray. Coach Gray, come and tell us a little bit about our two signees here. It seems like yesterday we were here with uh, with our guys last year. Uh, Terrell Miller signed with Murray State and in Lafayette Rutledge signing with Nichols State. Um, and, and just kind of an update on those guys. This past Friday, Division One basketball started, and Lafayette Rutledge and Nichols State went up to Boston College, who was in the ACC, and beat them. Um, he had a he had a great game, made a couple threes uh, among that six point victory. Uh, I believe it's the first time they beat an ACC team in program history. Um, and Terrell Miller, when he playing for Murray State, scored 23 points on Friday night in the victory over Illinois State. Um, actually played against Middle Tennessee State last night and had 15. Um, and also former Bear David Burrell for East Tennessee State, who played here two years ago, uh, scored 27 points in their victory, um, in East Tennessee State's victory over Fordham. So guys moving on uh, to, to Division I programs and, and using Southwest, you know, their time here, 
uh, in their development here, both as a as a player, more importantly as a student. Um, we always we always insist that the student comes before athlete and student athlete, and uh, and, and using that development to go on to Division One programs and make their impact at four year schools, and we're proud of them. And today is along those same lines. Uh, we have two of our own guys on this year's team uh, progressing and, and signing a scholarship with two significant uh, Division I basketball programs. Uh, it's, it's a big day for Southwest. I, 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 say, I say this all the time when we're, we're talking about guys signing Division I scholarships. You know, this is, this is something that, that they should be proud of. This is something they should be proud of. This is what they've been working for. Uh, you know, sometimes junior college is not the most luxur luxurious route that you could take um, in athletics, but, but these guys have used it and used it well. Uh, they've done well, and, and they're going to continue to help us on the floor this season. And so as we, as we start to, to look at their future, um, you know, we're excited to announce both of these guys moving on after this season. I'm going to start with Mike Parks. Mike's a guy who, who played another junior college last year, played Missouri State, West Plains, uh, chose to transfer into Southwest. Um, and one of the main things that he, he, he really found attractive about our program is the guys that were able to go on to Division I programs. And so from day one, he had that on his mind that Southwest was going to be able to do that for him. Um, and, and so he came in with a great mindset, has really worked hard this year, I think has lost 15 to 20 pounds, is that, is that about right, uh, in, uh, in, in, in this, this preseason, um, and, and, and really has shown through that how much he wants to go on and, and play basketball after Southwest. Um, he was recruited by multiple uh, four-year schools, some, some high major colleges, schools from the, the Big 12 Conference, schools from the American Athletic Conference, schools from the Big East Conference, um, received scholarship offers from, from schools that, that, are, that are really well thought of top 25 basketball programs, uh, but has chosen to go to the University of New Mexico, who, who I believe is, is one of the top 30 to 40 year and year out basketball programs in the country, who every, every March you'll more than likely see, see their name called in the Insulate Tournament. Um, and they go on and, and, and do big things in Slade Durner. A lot of a lot of people know the University of New Mexico uh, for their for their basketball arena. Their basketball arena is nicknamed the Pit. Uh, sports Illustrated has deemed it one of the top 20 uh, sports facilities in the country in any sport, professional or amateur. Um, and so it was in there with Wrigley Field, Fenway Park. Um, the, the pit is, is average attendance to watch a basketball game at the pit, to watch University of New Mexico play at the pit, is 15,400 people. Quite a difference from Southwest to, to going and playing in front of that. We're, we're just a little bit under that, Dr. Bishop, I believe. About 10,000 is what I think we average here. Um, but but it, uh, it, was, it was the host of the 1983 uh, NCAA Final Four University of New Mexico was. A lot of people remember that. That's Jimmy Valvano. Um, when that shot happened and you, and you saw Jimmy V running across when NC State beat Houston, that gym was the host of the, the NCAA Final Four that year. Um, former players that have played at, at University of New Mexico that went on to play in the NBA, Michael Cooper, who won the NBA championship five times, Luke Longley, who a lot of people know as the center for Michael Jordan's teams in, uh, in Chicago, won three NBA championships, NBA All-Star Danny Granger, um, who has had a, a, an unbelievable NBA career. Um, they are coached now by Craig Neal. Craig Neal is one of the best coaches, I believe, in college basketball. Uh, he was a former NBA coach. He actually was a standout college basketball player at Georgia Tech, was the ACC leader in assists during his time at Georgia Tech. That record was just broke by a North Carolina point guard. Um, so not only does he know how to coach, he knows how to play. Um, and Mike, Mike, the league that he's going into that University of Mexico plays in is the Mountain West Conference, is a league that fits him well. It's, it's a league that is full of, of big guys, big guys that, that he's going to have to get compete you know, night in, night out with. Um, and we're excited about him. I, I think that's a place, you know, I asked him after he committed, I said, I said, is, is this, you know, realizing one of your dreams? And he said, yes, coach, this is for sure realizing one of my dreams. He went on his visit. He said, once I saw that place, once I saw those 15,000 people watching basketball and going crazy, he said, I knew that was, that was the spot for me. Um, and so we're excited to announce 
um, Mike going to New Mexico. Mike's not only um, accelerating in, in the athletic arena, Mike has over a 3.0 GPA, is a standout in the classroom. He's on track to graduate in May, and he will be joining their program this summer um, during summer workouts and, uh, and, and going on to play as junior and senior uni University of New Mexico. So he will be signing here. Um, I'll ask just to hold the applause before I announce my, our next signee, but he will be signing here in a second with the University of New Mexico. Second is, uh, is James Hawthorne, Jr. James is from Prentice, Mississippi, uh, just a little over an hour away. Uh, as a guy that was instrumental in last year's state championship team, uh, most notably his state championship game where he scored 15 points uh, and did not miss a single shot in that game, including three threes, I believe, um, at least two threes, I know I think it's three threes, uh, did an outstanding job and kind of took a tough role last year. I mean, he, he was a guy, and I tell our guys all the time, he was a guy that, that was used to being the star at Prentice High School um, and came and was as selfless as an individual uh, as he possibly could be on last year's team. Didn't, didn't start many games, uh, you know, kind of did whatever it took, played positions that he probably didn't necessarily want to play, uh, but did whatever it took to, to allow this team to be successful. And I tell our guys all the time, it works out for guys that put others above themselves. And, and James is one of those that, that I can truly say. James had zero high, Division I scholarships coming out of high school. At, se at September 21st, September 21st, James had had 20 one Division One schools coming to see him in 21 Division One scholarship offers September 21st of this year uh, from some of the best mid-major programs in the entire country um, and I think that that transformation that going from zero come out of high school uh, to 21 says a lot about Southwest but it more importantly says a lot about James and says a lot about James as a person says a lot about James as a player says a lot about where James is coming from um, and, and I'm so proud of him and, and his decision. He has chosen to go play basketball out of those 21 Division I scholarship offers. He's chosen to go play at Middle Tennessee State um, with someone that, that we know very familiar from Southwest, former Southwest Community College coach Kermit Davis Jr. Uh, is now the head coach at Middle Tennessee State. Uh, his father, a lot of people in Mississippi will know, his father was the head coach at Mississippi State um, from, from 1970 to 1977. Uh, Kermit Davis Jr. has coached at LSU. He's been the head coach at Texas A&M. He was the youngest head coach at 28 in the country at the University of Idaho. Um, he's landed at Middle Tennessee State where four out of the past five years they've either won the conference tournament or shared the conference championship. Um, this past year probably had his most successful season at Middle Tennessee State. Middle Tennessee State went as a 15 seed to the NCAA tournament, upset that a lot of college basketball sports writers said that was the biggest upset in NCAA history when they, as a 15 seed, beat number two seed Michigan State. Uh, they, they beat them, became kind of the darlings, as a lot of people say, in the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, went on to, to eventually lose to Syracuse uh, University, who went on to play in the Final Four. So, so you can say, in a, in, a, in a large sense, that it was a very successful year for them. Um, I, I think that just kind of in the same way that Mike found a good fit for his playing style, James could not have found a better fit with, with his playing style. And I think that's probably one of the things that he saw when he went to visit Middle Tennessee State. They take guys that are like him, that are long, that are athletic, that are slim, that can play multiple positions, and they are really successful with them. And so both of these guys signing these scholarships not only signifies the, the great opportunity to finish their education um, and, and be able to graduate from college, but to be able to put themselves in a situation to be successful on the basketball floor and potentially play basketball in the future after they graduate. And so without further ado, I'll ask them to pick up their pins and, and place their hats on their heads, and, uh, and we'll go ahead and sign these scholarships and make it official. Mike Parks going to the University of New Mexico, and James Hawthorne Jr. going to Middle Tennessee State University. Let's get a round of applause.
congratulations. Uh, I know these young men are deserving of this. They've worked hard. I've seen them uh, work since uh, January and in James' case since last year. It's always wonderful whenever this opportunity happens. We're very thankful. And we're also very happy for these young men and uh, wish them the best of luck uh, down the road. And of course, we have business to attend to now, currently, right, men? Uh, we're involved in our own season. But thank you. Uh, I guess we should thank the good Lord for this opportunity. Uh, that concludes our press conference, except for some pictures. If you'd like to hang around and take pictures, let's, uh, let's hang around and take a few fo uh, photos. So thank you all for coming today. Appreciate it. Have a great, uh, great afternoon. Bye. Hey. Good job, man. Hey. Good job. Hey. Did you share the uh, email that uh, they wrote about you? Yeah. Uh, I did. Uh, you